Welcome to our next installment of our whole body migraine assessment call. So I am Dr. Tanya Painter. And, you know, I like to just kind of do these calls for people who are struggling with migraines that are not having any luck with uh, conventional approaches. Uh, migraines are such a complex, uh, you know, syndrome of a bunch of different things going on, and it's different for every person. And so taking a look at the symptoms uh, that you experience around your migraines, it, symptoms that you experience even even away from your migraines can all lead us to help understand the bigger picture of what's going on, those biochemical imbalances that might be contributing to your migraines. So that's what I like to do in these whole body uh, migraine assessment calls. So, you know, in this call, I'm going to be reviewing information that um, the person who signed up for this call shared with us, and we'll be evaluating her symptoms based on that information. And then we're going to be looking for patterns that that symptom, those symptoms reveal, and then guiding us towards understanding a little bit about what's going on for her. So today we have Rhea. So Rhea um, shared the following information with us. So she started using a low dose estrogen pill, um, just looks like for one cycle uh, to help with nausea during her period but she had to stop them because of headache and severe nausea. And now she's on day 11 of her migraines. Um, she hasn't really noticed a whole lot about them since their new onset, um, but it started two days before her cycle started. And um, she's tried herbal teas with some relief like ginger and peppermint and feverfew. She started to take magnesium, B6, 12, B2, folic acid, melatonin, and chamomile for sleep. <clears throat> she has a history of seasonal allergies, no family history of anything. Um, pertinent here. So Rhea, so a couple of things. Um, one that I'll just mention quickly, if you're on folic acid, I would suggest looking at a different form. So folic acid is actually a synthetic form that a lot of people don't tolerate well. It's the most commonly used form because it's cheaper to use synthetic than natural. Well, but so look on the bottle. If it actually says folic acid, you might consider looking at something that says folinate or folinic acid. So that's just a side note. Um, the other thing that I'll mention about the B12, and I'll talk about this in uh, a little bit later in the video, but um, the type of B12 is very important, especially for you, because there's a history of, um, of seasonal allergies and stuff. And so again, I'll talk about that and the histamine piece in a minute. But if you're on a form of B12 called methylcobalamine, and so you'd look on the, the um, nutrition label, and if it says B12 in the form of methylcobalamine, you're not going to want that form. You're going to want either hydroxycobalamin or adenosylcobalamin. You do not want methylcobalamin and you do not want cyanocobalamin. Okay. okay, so let's talk a little bit about kind of the onset of your migraines here. So you started doing the low dose estrogen because of nausea around your period. So let's talk a little bit about what is causing that nausea. So one of the things that can cause that is low estrogen. And so that's probably where your doctor was going. Let's try supplementing you with a little bit of estrogen and see if that helps. Clearly it did not, but that tells us a lot of information um, based on how your body utilized that. So so the other major reason for having nausea around um, or just before your period is high prostaglandin output. So prostaglandins are an inflammatory fatty acid that our body derives from omega-6 fatty acids, which are pro-inflammatory. We get a lot of them from conventionally raised meat and you know other inflammatory fats like sunflower oil or safflower oil, um, things like you know canola oil, things like that. So um, so one of the first things in this situation would be going on a very high omega-3, low omega-6 fatty acid diet for the short term while, while you're working on kind of reducing this inflammation. Um, because these prostaglandins actually do promote inflammation. It's, it's meant as a healing thing, which is good, but when it's inappropriately released or there's too much, then we are constantly inflamed, which as most people understand, that's a, a really bad thing for, um, for migraines, but just how we feel in general. 
So the first treatment, first line of treatment would be looking at reducing your prostaglandin output. So increasing omega-3 fatty acids, lots of fish, um, grass-fed free range animals like cows or chickens, turkeys, things like that. We want to stay away from conventionally grown. We want to go specifically for organic free range and ideally grass-fed, not grain-fed. Um, and then, you know, emphasizing those fish, so wild caught fish, not farm raised fish. And you can also get supplements to help support a, a good quality uh, omega-3 intake. And then reducing inflammation just in general, which you can again do via diet with a lot of fruits and vegetables, or you can also do supplementally with things like curcumin or ginger. And you already were doing some of those anti-inflammatory, the ginger tea and the fever few, both very good anti-inflammatory teas. Um, and that might be why it helped a little bit, but you might not be getting enough. So usually with a tea, we want at least three cups of a fairly strongly brewed tea a day, um, which for some people, you know, they feel Feel like they're going to the bathroom all the time. So you could consider doing a supplemental option. Then the other thing that we're looking at is um, the, the prostaglandin aspect. It was probably compounded by the estrogen. So estrogen will help to stimulate prostaglandin release. So when you took supplemental estrogen and it wasn't balanced with progesterone, which most of us women are already deficient in just because of stress in our life and, you know, just a lot of different factors. I've gone into them in uh, previous videos. You can kind of take a look at some of those if you're interested. But the short story is that when we're higher stress, our, pro our progesterone drops and we're already tend to be very estrogen dominant dominant progesterone deficient. So when you took the estrogen um, uh, birth control, that probably worsened that deficiency or, or estrogen progesterone ratio. I won't say you were deficient because I don't know that. Um, but that possibly could be part of what's going on. And then on top of that, the increased estrogen would have increased your prostaglandin releases. And so again, going back to trying to work on bringing your prostaglandins down is going to be really important. So really going very strict on, you know, anti-inflammatory supports, anti-inflammatory diet, consider doing something like an AIP diet, auto, um, autoimmune or anti-inflammatory, depending on who you talk to, um, protocol diet. Um, usually people with my Migraines tend to do a little bit better with more quality, like whole grain carbs than a strict AIP diet calls for. So you can play with that, but really going with, you know, a, a whole 30 diet or something like that, that's really going to reduce inflammation is going to be super helpful, uh, making sure you're getting rid of sugar, those kinds of things. And then the other key piece that I picked up on, so you had mentioned that you have seasonal allergies. We're in the middle of March. We're going to be heading into, or we already are heading into allergy season. I'm going to assume that you have springtime seasonal allergies. That's just an assumption. It might be fall. It could be year round. I don't know. But the fact that you have an allergy situation at any point in the year tells me that you have some issues processing histamine. So histamine is something that our white blood cells um, release into our body to help fight. Um, it's, a, it's again, it's a good pro-inflammatory thing to help us fight viruses and, and you know parasites and other things, but it can also be inappropriately released during pollen season. And we can also have histamine releases in food and um, in various other things that we do. So one of the things that uh, estrogen does is it boosts histamine release and it suppresses the enzyme that breaks histamine down. So that's kind of a double whammy for you there, especially as we're heading into to allergy season. I mentioned uh, earlier at the very beginning of this, um, this video that um, methylcobalamin was not a good choice for you. And this is why, because methylcobalamin will actually increase histamine, the strength of histamine. It's almost like, like um, histamine on steroids is what I think of it, or a super and histamine when histamine meshes up with a methyl B12 or the methylcobalamin, it becomes super, super histamine. So we want to try to avoid that. The hydroxy or the adenosyl cobalamin that I mentioned at the beginning of the video would be better options if you are on B12, because that could be contributing to some of that issue. So you might consider looking at a low histamine diet and layering that into the antihistamine protocol, uh, or I'm sorry, the anti-inflammatory diet that you're going to also be looking at. And then you can also consider doing some like histaminex or histamine block, DAO support, something like that to just kind of help your body. Curcumin, um, 
High dose vitamin C, quercetin and nettles are some of my favorite go-tos for kind of an antihistamine um, situation. So you can also look at some of those supplements. Um, I would definitely, you know, don't start anything until you talk to your doctor um, because I'm not prescribing anything. I, I obviously don't know you, but those are my go-tos for an anti antihistamine. And then the curcumin and the vitamin C and all those things also help to reduce um, inflammation as well. So you'll kind of be getting some double duty on that. And then we would really want to come back to that hormone piece. So once you've given your body a chance to kind of calm down after just, you know, kind of what it's been going through for the last month or so, uh, we want to give it about three months to really work on decreasing inflammation and allow your, your hormones a chance to balance again. If at that three month mark, you're still having problems, then you're going to need to go in and look at that estrogen progesterone ratio. And so we actually, um, I have some videos coming out soon about the estrogen progesterone ratio. It's important in hormone balancing and understanding how that's going to be playing a role in your hormones, especially with a hormonally triggered migraine. But the short story is progesterone needs to be about 200 to a ratio of one estrogen. So 200 to one progesterone to estrogen. A lot of women that I see with chronic migraines are like 20 to one or 30 to one way low in their progesterone compared with estrogen. And that sets them up for a big inflammatory process and um, progesterone is a neurosteroid. So it helps reduce inflammation in the brain, all kinds of really great stuff. And so if that ratio is not where it needs to be, if you're estrogen dominant, too much estrogen running around, we see increased inflammation increase prostaglandins, increase histamine issues, increase all kinds of different stuff, right? So we would want to take a look at that three month mark, where are your hormones at in relationship to each other, as well as in relationship to your normal levels. And, um, and then that would be where you would kind of move forward in, do you need to support progesterone over estrogen or what's going on there? So hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, I know that's a lot of information in a short period of time. But um, there's a lot of stuff that goes into migraines in particular, um, and but also just in general hormones and hormone imbalance. So uh, one of the things that I do want to just mention, and I like to mention at the end of all of these whole body assessment calls is that we don't want to just eliminate or, um, you know, find medications based on the information that I provide, right? Our goal is to identify those problem areas. We evaluate the situation, evaluate your symptoms. We eliminate anything that we know is contributing to that inflammatory process or to the migraine process. But then this, the third and most important step is that we're, we're working on healing it. So we want to actually actively take steps to heal it, not just band-aid it with supplements and things like that. So that last third step is really important. And that's kind of where that whole body idea comes from is that we need to actually work on increasing how our body is healing, making sure it has the nutrients that our detoxification pathways are open and that our body is able to actually begin healing because we usually are coming from such a point of depletion. Once we have chronic migraines that, um, until that's addressed, we'll never actually see lasting control. So we can target those underlying biochemical pathways. There is hope. There is a way to do it. It's amazingly effective. So if you want more information about this type of individualized, uh, biochemical approach to your migraines, then I would invite you to watch my free training. It's linked below in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So you're, uh, notified of all of our new videos as they come out every week.